What's good, BitRushers? It's Kyler, and you are watching BitRush Crypto. If you guys are new around here, please consider subscribing, and if you guys are enjoying my content, definitely go ahead and pound that thumbs up button. In today's video, I'm going to be going over five tips to increase your credit score quickly. You guys may be thinking this is a crypto channel. Why are we talking about credit? And in general, my goal here on this channel is to help you build wealth. Our main vehicle that we're going to use is cryptocurrency. But once you build some wealth, you need to still have credit, whether you want to buy that house you know, on the beach for the summer or if you're ready to get that Lambo. It's also important if you're an entrepreneur and you want to grow a business or start a business, you're going to need a line of credit. It's important to be able to put things on a credit card so you don't need to come out of pocket with that capital outlay and you can leverage your cash flow. Very important for businesses. And so all around, guys, in today's day and age, it's important to have a great credit score. And so we're going to just go over a couple quick things that you can do and a little bit of strategy to increase your credit score. So when you're ready to buy that Lambo, you got a nice high score. So to start, the most important thing is going to be the age of your credit. If you're just getting started, you maybe are a younger person, you don't have any credit at all, you want to get going as early as possible. If you're someone who has had many credit cards or has lines of credit already, we never want to close an account, okay? So even if that account has like a high you know, yearly fee or whatever it happens to be, you don't get great points, you're know, thinking about switching to a different card or something like that, just go ahead and put it in a drawer, cut it up, but do not close the account because it's going to help you in the long run having a longer age on your credit score. So it does actually average. Um, so if we open a new one and that new one is only you know one month old and we have one that's five years old, we're gonna you know average that out and our average credit score between the two would be two and a half years. Now if we close that first one, we're basically eliminating all of that credit that we've built up in the past. Okay, so that's number one is never go ahead and close your accounts. We wanna age our credit. And this is going to be important to a couple tips later down the road here, what I'm going to get to in just a minute. But that's the first thing, guys, is just keep those cards open. Maybe charge something on them once in a while. I personally have some cards that I keep open, and I just, you know, every other month I'll put some gas on it. You know, $50, $60 fill my tank. And then I'll go ahead and pay that off over the next three or four months, just minimum payment, like a $20 payment or whatever it is. And that way I can keep those cards open. I'll have a very minimum balance on them and I don't have to worry about, you know, anything, you know, paying back an exorbitant fee or whatever. But it is helping my credit age, um, keeping those open for a long period of time. And that brings us to our second point. So number two is going to be keep your credit utilization low. What credit utilization is, is the percentage of credit that you have, your maximum credit line, and how much of that is used. There are two ways to go about this. Number one is obviously pay off any credit that you have um, as much as you can. If you have any extra every single month, pay it down. Try to get it below 30%. Um, so as we're an investment channel, the first most important thing, even before you pay off your debts, is to make sure you're investing. That's not what this video is about, but you should be investing at least 10% of every dollar you earn. Um, you know, that's 10 cents on the dollar. So if you earn $100, you're going to go ahead and put 10 into an investment. The next thing you're going to do after you pay yourself first and invest in yourself is going to be take another 10% and use it to pay down your credits, your, your credit cards, your, you know, any lines of credit that you may have, a car or a house or whatever it is. And 10% is just the bare minimum, guys. Most of you guys are going to be paying much higher than that. Obviously, the goal is to kind of get debt free to where we can keep it at only 10%, but that's just the bare minimum that you should be doing. So 10% in investments. 10% to pay off credits and the rest should be um, for you to spend or you know continue to put more into your investments ideally um, but yeah that's up to you guys that's another topic for another video now some of you may be saying oh that's well and great but I don't have that much income right now uh, maybe you are putting that money into investments and so you don't have any extra to pay down your credit cards or to pay down your debts Another little quick tip and hack that you can do to you know, lower your utilization of your total credit 
is to actually add a line of credit. Okay, so let's just say you have one credit card and it's a $2,000 limit and it's completely charged up. You pay the minimum every month, but it pretty much stays at about 2,000 of that credit, which is 2,000 available. Now you're at 100% utilization if you have 2,000 in credit and you're using 2,000. So what we could do is by adding a second line of credit, also let's just say for easy math at $2,000, and we don't use it at all, we get that card, we activate it, we cut it up, we put it in a drawer, put it in a safe, do something so we're not spending on that card. Now we just doubled the total credit line, and if we still had 2,000 used, we're now at 50% of the 4,000 total. So that's a great little tip, trick, hack, whatever you want to call it, that by increasing your total credit, you're going to lower the utilization. Again, guys, don't go crazy here. And if you're one of those people that, you know, when you do get more credit, you want to spend it and use it, make sure that card is not available for you to use. If you need to, like I said, just cut it up. Um, keep it open, never use it, that's fine, okay? This is just to increase the total credit line on our report so that the utilization lowers. Another factor to consider when doing this is how it affects your other areas of your credit score, like the first one we talked about, which is credit age. So obviously, if you're adding more um, new credit lines, it's gonna lower your age average because now you have a bunch of new stuff, okay? So um, just keep that in mind, do the math, figure out what's best for you in each situation. It's just an option, not necessarily a recommendation. Number three is gonna be to build a positive credit history where you're paying you know, down your credits every single month when the credit card companies or the reporting agencies look at your report, what they're gonna see is you've continuously made payments and paid everything off on time. This is very important. So one trick and you know tip that I like to do here is to only use your credit card on things that you would normally use for cash or debit. Let's just say an example like I used earlier, you, you wanna put some gas in your car, it's maybe 50, 60 bucks, you have the cash, you have it in your account, you'd normally use your debit card. Go ahead and pull out your credit card, put it on your credit card, and at the end of the day or right after, immediately if you want to, go ahead and call that credit card and make a payment, pull the money out of your debit, uh, your checking account and pay off the exact amount that you just charged up. You can do it instantly, you can do it weekly, you can do it monthly. Just make sure you're spending only the amount of money that you have available that you can quickly and easily pay off. This will help you build a great history and show the credit cards that you are using their credit, which will help you get more lines of credit in the future, help you to increase your limits because the credit cards then want you to spend more on that card so they'll increase your limit to kind of entice you to put bigger and better purchases on that card. The number four thing you wanna do is limit the amount of hard inquiries. Okay, so if we're gonna be adding new lines of credit, one thing that happens is every time you apply to a credit card, you're going to get a hard inquiry on your account. A couple of these here and there don't really affect your score negatively, but if you're doing a lot, um, you know, a lot in a little amount of time, this is gonna negatively affect you because it looks like you're trying to charge some stuff up real quick. Um, so that does negatively impact you. So just make sure if you are applying for new lines of credit that you have a very high success rate of getting them so you don't need to apply to a bunch of them. You're only doing maybe one here. Wait a couple months, do another one. Whatever it is, guys, uh, this is something that's gonna be person to person. Um, you know, to each individual is gonna have a different situation and so I can't speak to that exactly. And again, none of this stuff is financial advice, just, you know, my kind of tips and tricks here. And so make sure you're only applying to a few of them. Make sure you're only applying to ones with a very high success rate. And the fifth trick is to diversify the lines of credit available. Um, what this means is not just credit cards, it could be a mortgage, it could be a car payment. Obviously, those are big ticket items. You don't want to just go nilly willy, um, buying new cars and houses, um, only purchasing things that you know you can definitely pay back in a timely manner that you can afford with your current income. Um, but diversifying can help your credit portfolio, can help increase your score. So one kind of tip and trick that I have for this one is you can get a personal loan from the bank for a very small amount that you know you can pay off. Go ahead and pay off that very low amount every single month and it's now going to diversify your credit portfolio. Um, if you wanna kill two birds in one stone, what you can do is take out an amount 
in a personal loan that you can use to pay down your credit cards for any you know past credit usage that you have is going to decrease your utilization by paying off that credit on the credit cards and also diversify your credit portfolio by adding a personal loan it's the same thing if you're paying the loan back if you're paying the credit card just make sure you can afford it so now instead of paying a credit card you're paying a personal loan you lowered your utilization rate increased your overall credit line diversified your portfolio this can be like a two and three in one very helpful and useful but again guys make sure you're smart about it you're not taking anything out that you can't pay back on time which will then negatively affect you so those are my five tips um, quick and easy all of them and again time does matter so if you're looking at doing something in the future maybe you're buying a new house in a couple years or you think you're going to have enough cash flow available to get that lambo in a few years you want to start doing this stuff ahead of time as early as possible so that your credit score is high when the time comes to make those purchases okay so go ahead and take a look at your score one place that you can go to to kind of get some more tips and tricks and um, you know, be able to monitor and watch what's going on with your credit score is Credit Karma. It is free. There's other companies out there, but I wouldn't recommend paying for any of these services when it is freely available. Every single month, you can go in and check and see how you're doing, what your percentages that you've paid off are, what your utilization is, what your credit history looks like. Sometimes you may have a late payment on there that you didn't know about. It might not be correct. So then you can call those credit card companies and have them correct it so it's reporting correctly on your behalf. So all around, I do think that's a really great service to have. And again, guys, just be smart about everything you're doing. Um, and you know, you wanna build up your personal credit before you get a business card because if you're going into business, if you're an entrepreneur, whether it's with your trading account, are you treating that as a business or you wanna start some kind of other business, you need to have a high credit score on your personal end to be able to leverage for the business. Okay, and if you are in a business, you should get a business line of credit so it doesn't negatively affect your personal finances. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If so, again, go ahead and pound on that thumbs up button. Maybe give me a share on your social media. And uh, yeah, let's continue to grow our wealth. The credit and a high credit score is just our first step in making sure that we have the available funds and credit needed to get all those different assets that we want to leverage our cash flow. Um, all around, just great to have a good credit score, guys. Um, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.